gonna ask you uh, if I say there's this function f and uh, maybe say from from a to b, a to b, I'm gonna tell you this function is it's continuous, um, and we'll just we'll just call it continuous, and I'll tell you it's increasing on the entire interval. It is increasing. To you, how would you define that right now? Um, you don't even have to use calculus. Like a line going like this. A line. Like this? Always like this. Slope. Yeah. Increasing. More at least. Why is the slope greater than zero? Oh, we're just jumping right into this. Okay. So increasing if we didn't have calculus. We would say, um, let's say this is f of a. Uh, then this would be f of b. We know that's true because if it's increasing, then it starts, it's gotta start off, well, n greater than it started, right? If it's always increasing, then if my, f of, if my a f of a is right here, any point I pick after that, what would have to be true of that point after this? It would have to be greater. Be greater, right? The y value would be greater. We're always going up. Every time we go over, we go up at least a little bit. Right? We never come back down. Well, if we think about it, every time we go over, we go up. We don't have to go over like steadily. It doesn't have to be the same every time, but we do. We have to just keep climbing, 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 climbing. Now, without calculus, we wouldn't really have a way to talk about this in terms other than the one we just said. Okay? So Julia just put it for us. If it's doing that, if it is going up every time it goes right, then we can say with calculus, the slope is always what? Positive. Positive. It's always greater than zero. Okay? So for an increasing function, um, on uh, a to b, uh, f prime of c is greater than zero for all c that are between a and b. Does that make sense? Yeah. How about for decreasing? A decreasing function. What? That would be a negative slope. Decreasing on a to b that f prime of c is less than zero for all. Actually, there's a symbol that means for all. Do you want to learn it? What to do? Here it is. <laughs> Upside down capital A. For all what? c <laughs> between a Whoa. and b. What was that one you taught us last class? Uh, uh, there exists. There exists. Yeah. yeah. Backwards, oh, right. backwards capital E. And um, therefore. Yes. Such that, just like that. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a slash. I've seen a vertical line. I think vertical lines are such that sometimes. That's in sets. I remember. But uh, maybe we'll start using that. Such that. Do you feel like COVID might be actually able to be written in the form of sets? <laughs> such that, and there exists a for all. Well, what's such that? Should probably go. Well, in Italy, it's it's like, I guess it's a slash it. like this. Right. Okay. Such that. So as she was saying, we were, we were talking about how for Roll's theorem and, and, and mean value theorem, there exists a C such that uh, f prime of C is zero, maybe for Roll's theorem. Yeah, and then we Part of the of um, maybe the set from A to B. Yep. I like all the symbols. Take more math class and you can see lots more symbols. Uh, so this.
this is like, um, we, we've always read this, or I have in all my math classes, mm -hmm. is uh, like which is an element of, okay, which is an element of, which is means it's a, it's a part of, it's contained within this group of numbers, or, or numbers from A to B. Anyway, we don't want to leave that there forever. Okay, so f prime of c is less than zero uh, for all c between a and b. Uh, we could have used the c's just like c like this. Really, we should do like set notation from a to b. This is more common though. We want to calculate that too. Um, so for all c values that are between a and b, the slope will be negative, less than zero. Agreed? Makes sense. It's yeah. increasing. Got a positive slope decreasing. Got a negative. Okay, um, so that's good. We covered that increasing. Um, let's just we'll jump right into an increasing, decreasing question. in your previous knowledge. I had to do it extreme on that kind of thing. So number 12, I'm not really sure. Yeah, that's exactly what they want you to do for number 12. Find the intervals, right? From here to here, the function is increasing. From here to here, it's decreasing. All right, so find the intervals for which the function is increasing and decreasing. You should be able to state it for, uh, you should be able to take the whole function and break it into intervals. And every interval will be increasing or decreasing. Do you have to figure out on your own, on your own, where do I find like where those intervals begin and end? You can try it. Please say number twelve. Though. Number twelve. Zero. So you can, uh, if you give you a couple minutes, and if you can't quite figure out how to find where those intervals begin and end, then I'll let you ask around. Don't do it quite yet. So we want to figure out where it's increasing and decreasing, like all the intervals where those two things are happening. That's all a function can do except for be flat for a long time. That's a hard thing for a, a normal function to do. Okay, but if it's, uh, but with that, even, even that, even if it was flat for a while, we could just say, well, it's not doing either of those things. It's not increasing or decreasing. Wait. So the question is like, what energy is what angle? Is it decreasing? It's saying, we want to say from here to there, it's increasing. From after oh. that, it's decreasing. Or maybe it's increasing again. So kind of like the graph makes a good point of sense that has its local zero and then between it has its zero. Okay, so that's what we have to figure out. Like where, where will these intervals be? Where will I find these points where it stops increasing or decreasing? Uh, Toby, can you kind of state your conclusion there why you decided to find the slope of zero? Because when zero, it'll be So let's say if it does, if it does change from increasing to decreasing or vice versa, in between those two, you would have to have a slope of zero, right? Right. Got to be. All right. So we've got to take the derivative, 27 minus 3x squared. Okay. So we're going to find the places where that slope is zero, okay? Um, zero equals... Mm -hmm. 
Now, if we remember our, our polynomial of education, you'll know that the cubic function is going to look like that or like that. It's going to look like this or this. You got the negative in front of the x cubed, it's going to look like this. Okay. Now, if you're on the AP test and your question is find the intervals where this is increasing or decreasing and you use this to your advantage, I absolutely encourage you to do that. But we are going to come up with a, a process that works for every function. And since for this to work, you have to know if you just have an internal knowledge of what this function would need to look like. And we don't always know what every function looks like. We're not going to rely. But you can see, uh, this can help you confirm what we're about to find, that it would be decreasing, slopes are negative here, uh, and then it would stop decreasing, it would start increasing, stop increasing, and go to decreasing, okay? Um, just a side note before we continue on. If you find a place where the slope is zero, does that mean it's definitely going to switch from increasing to decreasing, or that no, it could be defined yeah. zero, go flat past zero, mm -hmm. and then continue to go. Right. Some cubic functions, if we if we like just had three x cubed, or sorry, x cubed and nothing else, then it would look something like that. And we flatten out and then just keep increasing. What can we do to that Check by what? Doing a closed point after the zero. A closed point? A closed point. Oh, a closed point. Like, close. Like one point after or something. Yeah, we're gonna do something like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and erase all this and we will with our work. So we know that at negative 3 and 3, those places are the only places where it could possibly change from increasing to decreasing. Okay. Okay. Only place that it could possibly happen. So, but we, we just don't know yet. Right. Now, about <laughs> the loudest. I think you could have done it with perfect form. Okay. Uh, so, remember what I, I said to you, my, my little, not warning, but just a heads up that this will be a challenging chapter in general. Yeah. But if you can trust me and, and, and basically over, do what you might think is overthinking this a little bit, uh, we'll build upon what seems like overthinking it until it's at, what it actually does is really help us manage a lot of information. Okay? Here's what I'm talking about. So trust that over Huh? So trust. Yeah, we're going to overthink this. We're going to do overkill on this problem because as we build on it, it won't seem like overkill anymore. It'll seem just right. Okay, so we're going to manage this information with its table. Right? So, so our first column is going to be x values of interest. And as we move along, what we're going to find is more x values that are interesting for different reasons. Right now, we have x values that are interesting because, why are these x values interesting? Because the slope is zero. Okay. Uh, also, we have intervals that are interesting, and so we'll cover those intervals. Okay. So, for x values that we're interested in, we're going to list them all off. Okay. Negative four. Negative four. Yeah. Okay, negative four and all values that are less than negative three. So x is less than negative three. X equals three would be the next thing we care about. Okay. X is greater than negative three. Oh, sorry, negative three. X is greater than negative uh -huh. three, but less than two. You got it. X equals three. X equals positive three. X is greater than three. Less than three. Greater than three. Okay, so that's x values. Um, from time to time, we might be interested in what the value of f of x is. Okay. We're also going to be concerned about what the value of f prime is. And we'll draw like conclusions about all this information. We'll have a little conclusions column. That is that the age of x for this problem, right? Sorry. Yes, sorry.
we might not necessarily care about everything in this row. Like, we can't even say anything really about h of x, like the value of h at x, because there, there is no specific x value. So kind of leave it blank. It doesn't, we don't have a value of h of x, right? Um, but h prime, we can kind of say something about the value of h prime on this interval. There's something consistent about h prime on this interval. Positive. Positive? Or negative. Or negative. How do we decide which it is? This is the part that's general. We don't know what the function looks like. Let's keep it in general. I had a different question that was not related to that, but I was thinking if you find the points at which the slope is zero mm -hmm. and you find two points, um, wouldn't you already know? Um, it could have just two flat points. See what I'm saying? Like this, flattened out, keeps going, flattened out again, keeps going again. So what I'm saying is, it would only be two flat points. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. It just doesn't necessarily switch from increasing to decreasing or whatever. Okay, so how do we figure out what kind of values h prime will have when x is less than three? Well, let's say this. We know that the only place it's going to switch is going to be where the slope is zero. Okay, we found all those places. So anywhere else, whether to the left of a zero slope or in between zero slopes or to the right of the last zero slope, the slopes will have to be either all positive or all negative, right? So if you're just trying to be negative, you just like to take a point. Take a point, any point you want. Negative four, negative a million, anything that is less than negative three. If we put a negative three, we'll get zero, that's not good. Go to negative four, it's the next number that's probably the most negligible. So we don't have to put all that in here, we can just do some test values over here. We take the derivative, plug in negative four, and that'll let us know what kind of slopes we're getting. So negative four squared is 16, positive 16. Three times 16 is 48, that's a negative 48, 27 minus 48. You don't even have to know what it is, it's just negative. Which means the function, so it's negative. Our conclusion is? Well, like you're flat. No, no, it's less than zero. 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 The conclusion with a negative slope on an angle is that the function is decreasing. Oh. So decreasing. Okay? So is it kind of like, is there like a rule that if the x is positive and negative, the slope will be negative? Or is it just like because of this? Well, we're plugged it into the derivative. And the derivative is a function that tells us the slope. So if we get a negative value out of the derivative, negative slope. Right? Uh, now h of negative 3, now h of x. We could know something about h of x. We could know what it's worth. And that, remember that the, all of this is leading towards at, at least one major goal is to graph a function by hand, no matter how complicated it is. If we can find these pieces of information, like where we have uh, maximum, minimum values, all that kind of stuff. Graph it. So we can know something at negative 3 for h of x. That wasn't true on the interval. We can't really know what it is. We could, it's not even necessarily all positive or all negative. Uh, yeah. So uh, the value of h at negative 3 we can know, so we should, we should find it out. <coughs> and so how do we do that? Plug it in. Just plug it in. So negative 3, negative 3 cubed is? Negative 3. Is what? No. Negative 27, that's negative 27. This is negative, so that's positive 27, yeah? yeah. What's 27 times negative three? 81, negative 81. Negative 81, so we got negative 81, negative 81, plus 27, negative 54. So here, what we have here is negative three comma negative 54. Okay, uh, what about h prime? It's zero. That's, I mean, that's just kind of backwards. We had already found it out. Can we, now this is key right here. Like, alarms could go off right now just to let you know. This is the key moment, all right? So
So the slope is zero. If you think about the previous section, we found where the slope was zero. And what were we looking for in the previous section? The extreme. The extreme, right? The extreme mode, right? You know the word media? Media? What do you think of when you, when you just out there, in the world, you hear the word media, what do you think? Uh, news. News, magazine. This, each thing, TV, radio, magazine, newspaper, is a single medium. The medium through which information is given, and all of them together, plural, are the media. Okay, so when you talk about extreme, and extreme and extrema is the plural of extreme, okay? So we're looking for extrema in the previous section, four, four, or 3.2, right? We're looking for extrema, maxima and minima. That's only gonna happen where you have slope of zero, yes? Okay. Um, is this a maximum or a minimum? Uh, we don't know yet. We can't make any solid conclusions. We do know uh, that the slope is zero, but uh, we can't really draw any conclusions. Not for now. Yeah. <laughs> you only know that because you know, oh, it's because it's decreasing. Yeah. So if, it, if anything at this point, it's gonna be a minimum, yeah. right? It might just be leveling off and going back, like yeah. continuing back. That's a good observation, yeah. It could only be a minimum, but we don't know. Can we make a conclusion right now? Because we're on the, the cusp of something really good. It could only be a minimum is there something that might, we might do next that will tell us whether or not it's a, a minimum or nothing? <coughs> Five, Five. Three, three. Or the one one. Are you talking about the, the function, h of x? Right, in the previous section, we were like, we have to look on the left and the right and see if those values are above or both below or one above and one below, and therefore it's not a maximum or a minimum. Um, okay. But, Gavin, can you remind us why you said this would have to be a minimum, if anything? Because it's decreasing from the left first. We already know that it's decreasing from this direction. So it's coming down, decreasing, slopes are negative, and leveling off there. And we don't know what it does after that, but what could easily tell us? What happens next, and if this is a minimum? What's that? Anything to the right. What about to the right? Anything to the right, three before the next extreme moment. Yes, but it, like any, when you say anything, like which which function are you talking about? That like what should we get? Omega three is what from omega three. Yeah. Okay, in this interval. Anywhere from there to there. Okay. So so that's the that's the function. The slope is ah. Okay. Now we're talking about specifically which function. Slope. If the slope is <coughs> positive after that, then, then it would be a minimum. But it won't be the extreme end. No. Not necessarily. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, since it's it's always mm, are you saying because it's a uh, huge function that it has to break this way? So no, I'm not making a statement about cube functions at all. Just this function happens to be decreasing from all values that are less than a negative three, less than negative three. And at three, they stop decreasing, the, value, the, the uh, function stops decreasing and it levels out. And if the slope is positive after this, it goes back up, but it's slope to positive, then this would have to be a minimum, right? So maybe this is a minimum. If we're not really paying close attention, we might say it might be a minimum or a maximum, because we're not really paying attention but it's got to switch, right? The slopes have to switch. The increasing and decreasing, there has to be an exchange. So there has to be a switch from increasing, decreasing, or decreasing, not increasing. Okay, so let's go back here. Uh, we are trying to make a conclusion, but we can't yet. On this interval, we don't really know any specifics about h of x, because h of x is a value, it's a y value. So we don't know anything about that. But can we say something about h prime? Just pick a, 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 a test value somewhere between those two numbers. One. One? Yeah. Yeah. Zero, what about zero? Zero is between yeah. negative three. So 
Increasing, so it goes from decreasing to increasing. So it's the minimum. So it's a minimum. It's a relative. It's at least a relative minimum. Yes. Okay. Now, like I said, we're going to find lots of other things. Okay. About these functions. Right now, we're just finding the three x. Right. Get really valuable information here. X equals three. We could find a y value at x equals three. Does it matter? If we want to graph it, yeah. Okay. Ultimately, yeah, it's going to matter. Now, like I said, we are overthinking this. We are overkilling this. We're actually even uh, finding more information than the question is asking for. But I'm, I'm asking you to trust me. We're building. Okay? So at x is 3, we have a y value of 54. We have a slope value of 0. zero. Of course, we found that out. That's how we found 3 in the first place. Okay? And We'd like to conclude that it's a maximum or a minimum. Could it be a minimum? No, because no. it's increasing to that, right? Up to that value of three. So at, at best, it's a it's maybe a maximum. We're hoping, hoping and praying. That it's a maximum. Would it only not be a maximum if it flattened out to our actual asset? It would uh, that, or if it went back to increasing. Place, like we can find that place on the graph, know that it's flat, and then draw the graph for the flat. It doesn't have a name though. Okay. Uh, so x is greater than three. We can't find a specific y value for that, but we can find what kind of, uh, of slope values we'll have. Negative. Like how do you know? Plug in four. Plug in four. Okay, we'll plug in four. We've got uh, lower one, that's the into oh yeah, into the derivative. Twenty seven minus so this is sixteen, twenty seven minus forty eight. Yeah, 27 minus 48 is going to be negative again. So it's negative, so it's decreasing. So it is indeed a maximum. Okay. So thanks for trusting me there. The only thing they're actually asking for is uh, these things. It's decreasing on this interval. Okay, really if we wanted to say interval, we would have to say uh, from negative infinity to negative three. That's actual integral notation. Okay. And then from negative three to three on that interval, it's increasing. Uh, and from three to positive infinity, it's decreasing again. That's what they're actually asking for in that question. But we're getting so much information now. And what we've developed without even realizing it is this uh, test that we're doing. Okay. So before we uh, state that test explicitly, you know, and officially and all that. I would like you to finish this statement. Okay. So I want you to use the vocabulary of increasing and decreasing. I, I want you to use the words increasing and decreasing to make a statement. For a continuous function, the only time you will find an extreme is when you finish it using the words increasing. No, I just on a piece of paper.
question and then I'm going to find an extreme and run a function based on these distances, these distances, and vice versa. Or not. Yeah. It can't be both. Or it can. Uh, not the same thing. You're wrong. Right? Okay, so now we're going to write down <laughs> uh, <laughs> when the, uh, when the uh, function switches. It has to switch. From increasing to decreasing, or vice versa. This Italian. Pizza? Oh, oh, we we correct each other all the time. I think it's when you say it's vice versa. You may have heard me say vice versa, but it's close. What does it mean? So it's a saying that you know what it means, just like we do in, in English. You just kind of know what it means, but it doesn't have a word-for-word -word translation. No, like, we use vice versa, but there's not a, a, a synonym yeah, in yeah. our translation. Okay. Yeah, it's not like American words. Like, translated into English words. Well, we, we use it when we want to say, we want to switch the decreasing and the increasing. We want to switch it, we would go switch to that or vice versa, it's just what it is, whatever. <laughs> it's hard, okay. Um, all right, so this right here uh, is the basis of what's called the first derivative test. First derivative test, okay. Construct it ourselves. I don't want you to, you know, get it just from the book. I want you to, to be part of the construction of the first derivative test. First, I want you to realize what the first derivative test is for. There's a first derivative test and a second derivative test, which we'll learn later. But the first derivative test and the second derivative test are used to find something. They're used to find the same thing. They're used to find extreme. Ah, extreme. Ah. Okay. So a little. Substatement used to find extrema, maxima, and minima. Okay. Now keep in mind we're talking about the derivative, okay? So we don't want to just say increasing, decreasing. That's something that Algebra 2 students, Algebra 1 students, <coughs> like the vocabulary there would they would use. Okay? Not that it's bad or anything, but we want to bring it up to the calculus level. Okay, so we use Talking in terms of derivative. So let's like do condition one, we're gonna find a maximum. Right? Okay. How will we find a maximum? How we go about finding a maximum from beginning to end? We're given a function. Step one, we will find a function in the basis of the decrease. So we'll find the slope is zero. Okay. So if f prime of c equals uh, zero, so that's not enough. And we're finding a maximum here. The conclusion will be we have a maximum. Is that f prime of c comma negative infinity equals? Well. We might be, there might be another, we might not want to go all the way to negative infinity because there might be another zero slope to the left of this thing. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So we'll kind of keep it unspoken. Okay. So we'll say um, F prime of, we're going to be really informal and loose with our notation here, but we 
and you can get return the top value. And for some x values, it's less than c, but it's not so less than c that it runs into some other zero slope, right? Um, this is a really mathematical effect. Uh, okay, so what are we going to say about that slope? The slope's not necessarily going to be increasing, but the function's going to be increasing, which means the slope is going to be positive. positive. It's greater than zero. Also, f prime of some x value that's bigger than c, but not so much bigger that it gets to some other critical number, uh, is going to be what? Negative. Less than zero, negative. What do we conclude? It's a maximum. So if I want to confirm that this thing's a maximum, first we have to be at a value of c that is correlated to a zero slope. Then we'll look on the left and look on the right. If it goes from a positive slope to a negative slope, increasing to decreasing, we've got ourselves a maximum. Right? That's what we found in the previous slide here. It went from increasing to decreasing, positive slopes to negative slopes. That means it's going to have to be a maximum. We could easily do the same thing for the minimum condition if f prime of c zero, f prime of x that's less than c is greater than zero, f prime of some x that's, uh, that's yeah, I'm doing this right, greater than c is less than zero, we have a minimum. And if one of these things does not happen, we don't have a maximum or a minimum, right? If it goes from positive slopes to positive slopes, neither, negative slope to negative slope, neither, yeah. What did I do? The, exactly no, the oh, that's it. Thanks a lot. We can put a little uh, side notes here. This is uh, increasing and it goes to decreasing. It goes from decreasing to increasing. Seconds to put up with. I know we didn't get a lot of practice in, but we did like in that one problem we packed a lot of information and we actually worked through all that stuff. If we want to find extrema and intervals where it's increasing and decreasing, we can construct this table every time. Okay? But first we're going to find where the slope is zero. Right? Find where the slope is zero. That defines your intervals, and then test your intervals for positive or negative. Is that all right? Yeah. Need help, I'm sure. Pretty sure I've got a few thumbs up. Hold on a second. Huh? There's two. There's two? Okay. Cool. Maybe the first one.